Hello, this is Brock Lemires. We're continuing our study of embedded systems design by looking at program flow instructions. In this video, we're going to look at two instructions that are based upon the zero flag in the status register. Okay, so these are conditional jumps and the MSP430 has two instructions. One is called jump if zero and this instruction will take the jump if the Z flag is asserted. It also has a jump if not zero, <clears throat> which will take the jump if the Z flag is equal to zero. Okay, so GAZ if Z is equal to one, JNZ if Z is equal to zero. Pretty simple. Just a reminder though, what does it mean to take the jump? If it is true, if this condition is true and you take the jump, that means you are gonna alter the program counter with a new value that will set it into a different area of the program memory other than the next instruction that resides immediately after this particular instruction. If it does not take the jump, so if I was looking at, if I was executing JZ, you still execute this JZ, you read the opcode, and let's say that Z was equal to zero. It would not take the jump and the program counter would be incremented to the next immediate address which holds the next opcode of the next instruction sequentially in memory, okay? In either situation, you, this is an instruction that will be executed, the program counter will get a new value. The question is to whether it's gonna be the next address in memory or a different address that resides somewhere else wherein it, is, it jumps. One unique thing about the zero-based jumps is JZ and JNZ is, are the ones I use. They actually support these other mnemonics. Uh, there's JEQ and JNE, and that stands for jump if equal to zero, and this is jump if not equal to zero. So these, all these mnemonics are supported. Uh, they, they come out to be the same opcode and operand. It's just they give you a little bit of flexibility if you just happen to like JEQ. Uh, I, I don't know why I like JZ and JNZ, but use whatever you want. All right, let's do an example. Uh, just like uh, prior... Un or conditional instructions. Let's go ahead and make a new project that will allow us to watch the program counter as we either jump or not jump based on the Z flag. So let's do file new CCS project and let's call this one uh, ASM SM flow zero jumps. Okay, come down here, empty. Empty assembly only, got my MSP430 selected. I go ahead and finish this, buddy. All right, here's my main.asm, and let's come down here and let's walk through what we're gonna do. Okay, so to begin with, let's get this over here a little bit more. I mean, we're just gonna type this in, but let's talk through it. Okay, let's have an init, and let's do a move.b. Let's put something in R4, okay? R4 is this register we're gonna be entering or altering based upon various jumps. So R4 gets a zero to start with, okay? Then let's get ourselves a main loop and let's do a little test condition. So let's move into B, or let's move a byte into R5 and let's make it 98 and R5. Okay, so now let's, let's do a different instruction. Last time we did a uh, an add, but this time let's do a compare. So we, ha we haven't used a compare outside of the example on test. If I wanna compare this to a value, Let's just, let's check to see if what is in R5 is 99. So the question I'm asking in this compare is, is R5 equal to 99? <clears throat> okay, and the way that that works is you will take R5 and you will say it's equal to, I don't know, excuse me, R5 minus 99. And you will then ask the question, is Z equal to zero? Or excuse me, one. Because when it does a subtraction, if R5 had 99 in it, you'd subtract 99 from it, and the answer would be zero. And then the Z flag would be asserted, okay? So that's what the compare does. In this test example, we're putting 98 into R5. That means it is absolutely not going to be asserted, and you will not have a Z is equal to one, so you can't jump off of it, but <clears throat> we'll see how it works. <laughs> All right, so here we are, boom, boom. Uh, okay, so here's what we're gonna do. What is going on here? Jay-Z, <clears throat> I'm gonna create an address table calls. It is 
99. And I will jump there if z is equal to 1. Okay? If it is not equal to 1, I will then do a jnz. And this is it is. And this will be it is or it's not <laughs> 99. And in this situation, z will be equal to 0. Okay, so our first test case where we're going to have 98 in R5, this is the one that will jump, okay, first, but we'll test them both. Okay, so come on over here and let's put some code for the case that it is 99. So it is 99, address label, and let's stick uh, 1 into R4. Okay, so let's do a pound 1 into R4. So remember, R4 is just this register we're altering based upon these this condition. And just like... Uh, we talked about last time is once you do this little segment of code for it is 99, we got to jump back to main so that we don't continue marching down into the rest of the program. Because right below this one, you're going to have it's not 99. And in that situation, let's stick, uh, what do you want to stick in there? Probably two. We'll stick two into four. And then we got to do jump back to main. Okay. <clears throat> so there is our little test program. And this will execute, let's uh, save that and hit the debug. And this is going to show us how a zero base jump works. All right, so symbol link it, create the executable object file, download it, start a session, and here I go. All right, so I want to come down here. I'm going to put program memory on here just because I kind of like and seeing what's happening. I like seeing these labels uh, because I, I like seeing program counter. Okay, so... <clears throat> So we'll look at program counter. It's going to start at 8,000. We are going to go down here, set a oh, set a breakpoint at the first instruction in mem in our program. Let's go ahead and run to it. Okay, we're at 8,000 and A. So our first instruction starts at 8,000 and A, which is right down here, this init label. And I want to see R4, and I want to see the zero flag. So here's R4, and here's zero. <clears throat> and let's go ahead and put R5 in decimal also. Oh, it's in decimal. All right, so I do one, boom. R4 is at zero, and now we can start doing our little test case. Let's go ahead and slap a 98 into comp, and now here's what's going to happen. This instruction is going to subtract 99 from R5. That will not result in a zero. It did result in a negative, but we don't care about that. We're looking at zero. Z is equal to zero, and that's because R5 did not contain 99, and now I'm going to say jump if it is a zero. And I step it, it did not jump because the condition for this instruction was not true. It was false. But the program counter definitely moved to the next instruction in memory, which happens to be at 8016. Okay, so that's where this instruction resides. Now, I know that this now is going to jump. So let's go ahead and hit that. It jumps down to it's not 99, which if I looked in my memory, it's not 99, is at 801C. Notice that program counter is 801C. And boom, so we go ahead and do that. Jumps back up to main and it repeats forever. Okay, so that's kind of fun. Let's test the other side. Let's test the dual. So I'm gonna say stop on that. And I don't know why I keep saying dual. I don't know if that's even an accurate statement. Let's do this. I'm gonna go 99, boom. All right, so I'll go ahead and this is my second little test case. And here we are. Boom, boom. It's going, it's going, it's going. Okay, I got my breakpoint set. I'm going to run to the breakpoint. And let's go down. Let's get, uh, let's get Z on the screen. Okay, here we go. So I'm going to step. That sets R4 to 0. I'm going to step. R5 is equal to 99. I'm going to compare R5 to 99. It will subtract 99 from R5. Update the status flags, but not alter R5. So I go step. Look what happened. Z flag is equal to one. Now I am going to execute this jump, this conditional jump instruction. If the Z flag is equal to one, which it is, it will take the jump and move the program counter down to it is 99. Okay. I can look in program memory and say it is 99 sits at 8018. So that's right, that address right here. And so watch this jump. It's going to go boom. It took the jump, and if I check out where the program counter is, it's at 8018. All right, so I go ahead and step it. R4 gets updated to 1. I get jump back to main, and we repeat forever. Okay, very similar to 
to carry base jumps, but this time it's just based upon the zero flag. What's kind of nice about the zero flag jumps is this little guy right here, this compare. So you can use that uh, additional compare instruction. Okay, that is it. Nice work. And as always, remember to subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date on all the latest videos. See ya.